Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am going to have another guest on the channel. We're gonna be talking about all things winter skincare. We've got some great tips joining up with Dr. John Kim, who is a pharmacist, and he has a lot of pearls of wisdom, so you're gonna to wanna to stick around and make sure you get all of those. We're also answering questions because we asked for some questions to be put up on Instagram, because this is going to be a dual live. So some of you may have caught this live on one of our Instagram channels, but if not, you're lucky because we recorded it and it's going to be on YouTube. So stay tuned for that discussion. I wanted to chat with Dr. John Kim, who is a pharmacist, and I'll let you talk a little bit about your background. Yeah, so my name is Dr. John Kim. Uh, I've been a compounding pharmacist for the last 15 years. So what compounding deals with is essentially customizing medications to the patient's needs. So before the manufacturer had started back in the 1950s, what the pharmacists really have to do is make drugs from scratch. And that's what it comes out to. And obviously that art of pharmacy has been somewhat lost, but there is still an essential key piece in terms of really helping to customize patient's therapy, especially in role of dermatology. There's certain products that the patients are not able to utilize because of certain ingredients in there, such as paraben or some other uh, ingredients such as propylene glycol or certain wetting agents that we are able to take out and really formulate for the patient's needs. And one of the things that I really love to do is really working with patients and as well as doctors and forming that triad relationship is key essential piece to actually providing a necessary care for patients and get the best outcome possible. So uh, one of the things that I really love to do is, uh, you know, working with different uh, dermatologists about skin formulation or uh, certain new bases that we've been working on. So one of the key things that I like to do is like scar therapy or mm -hmm. even in terms of patients dealing with eczema or in a scenario, today's, today's topic is dealing with severe dry skin. Yeah, we certainly see a lot more of that in the winter months. I know you're in the Northeast, which is definitely going to have cold you know, cold winters here in Idaho, we also get cold, we get a lot of snow and it presents unique challenges to the skin. And uh, I know you put up and I, I kind of want to use that as kind of the framework of the, you know, conversation is that post that you did on Instagram today, which talked about kind of five key things that we could do in the winter time to help protect our skin. And um, we'll just kind of use that as a framework and then answer some questions. So the first thing was swapping from a lotion to a cream. And as a compounding pharmacist, you have to be intimately familiar with the differences in vehicle. And a vehicle is kind of what the active ingredients are put in. And it can be lotions, creams, gels, ointments, all those different things. And so um, just I want to get your expert opinion on why a cream is better than a lotion, especially in the winter months. So that is the, the overall key piece of having the balance between oil and water, right? Water tends to evaporate very quickly. And so oil tends to stay put within the skin, if you want to simply put it, and provide the necessary barrier so it's where you tend to lose less of that moisture you're dealing mm -hmm. with. And this, this is the key thing that if you want to work on, you know, moving away from a, a particular lotion, a light lotion, and then going with a, a heavy emollient-based type of cream, what I like to really use is, I mean, we're talking about key ingredients and as well as products. Like this is a great product to utilize uh, because not in just only containing a, you have it too. Oh yeah, my God, sitting right that. behind me. So that's totally coincidental <laughs> also. I mean, this was not planned. It's not sponsored. No, no, no. Uh, we, we just both love the product. Uh, it, it's great. I mean, um, after I especially during the winter, after I take a shower, first thing I do is apply this immediately. It's because I want to keep that moisture as sealed as possible. Another thing is that this particular cream like this contains ceramides to really put that as like a glue piece for your skin itself. So you're mm -hmm. not losing uh, much moisture and it's, you, you tend to uh, keep that barrier going. And that's a key thing. Uh, if you're not gonna get any pointers today, talk about hydration, keeping your barrier in check. And that's how you utilize cream for that advantage. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really important tip is putting the moisturizer on as soon as you get out of the shower when your skin is still a little bit damp. And that makes all the difference because what we're trying to prevent is more water escaping from the skin. And when we immediately put that barrier on, 
It's just, you know, simple physics and chemistry that there's going to be less water loss because of the gradient of where the moisture is at. So that's a key thing that I try to drive home with all of my patients um, when we're dealing with that really dry skin in the winter. Severe dry skin. And then if it comes to a point that your skin is literally cracking, I've seen patients coming in, they're washing their hands constantly. It happens to a lot of the healthcare professionals right now. Yeah. When you're using uh, hand sanitizers on top of constant hand washing, you tend to have you know cracked skin or especially in the fingertips, that's, that's where you end up having to have issue with. So I like using more of a healing ointment that contains paraffin along with uh, petrolatum. So it's where you could mm-hmm. really seal that moisture and as well as help to heal that skin. So this is another great product that I like to recommend doing. Uh, guys, I'm not talking <laughs> talking about is crazy how you know i'm going to show you this is literally a product of stuff that i use on a daily <laughs> basis and then you'd be like what is this guy doing but you know the thing is yeah i'm very uh i have sensitive skin to begin with and another thing is as a formulation scientist as a compounding pharmacist i really look at into ingredients and what works or what doesn't as well as value that brings to the particular products that I've been picking uh, for myself and as well as my patient and my family. So, you know, I picked those two products from Sarah V is because it's inexpensive, really works well, and brings mm-hmm. a whole lot of value into, into your overall skincare. So that's the reason why I've been, I praise highly of their products. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. And, um, obviously, I mean, that was definitely not planned, but it just speaks volumes about the products themselves and and how much we use them. And, and there's other brands that I, that I do use pretty frequently too, but those are two that are kind of always, always keeping close. So you mentioned using the ointment with petrolatum or paraffin to really help heal those cracks. And that was one of the points you brought up also is using that to seal in hydration. You can use that on the hands. You can use that on the face as well in a practice we call slugging where the last step in your skincare routine, you're kind of smearing on just a really thin layer of petrolatum or CeraVe ointment or something. Um, One thing I did want to ask you just from your perspective as a compounding pharmacist is there is a little bit of chatter online on TikTok and different things that um, petrolatum containing products are toxic. And I think anybody that just throws around the word toxic actually doesn't understand chemistry at all because anything can be toxic in the right dose. But when we're talking about USP grade petrolatum, which is what is inside, you know, these types of products, can you just speak to the safety of USP grade petrolatum? Sure. So USP stands for United States Pharmacopeia. So it has a very stringent process of looking at the cleanliness and the purity of the particular ingredients. Okay, so that's another point in terms of compounding pharmacists looking at where the certain um, ingredients are manufactured. Are they USP grades, as I mentioned before, and as well as certificate of cleanliness or analysis looking at these type of things. And this is where the overall science of compounding comes in and looking at these in a stringent way because, you know what, I deal with a lot of patients going through sensitivity, right, sensitive skin. And I, there's nothing wrong with using petrolatum. Yes, there is a, a stigma going on, especially for me, I have a background in doing functional medicine and, and doing alternative medicine as well. So mm-hmm. I married the both worlds. There's no perfect system out there To say that, hey, you know what, you got to get rid of petrolatum and that's the only thing that should not be used. I don't agree with that at all. That you have Mm -hmm. to use different forms of science and supporting your overall uh, skincare routine to bring the best results possible. So I do use petrolatum. Um, I do use products that contain petrolatum as well. You know, Mm -hmm. um, and you got to look at the cleanliness at the same time. And, And one of the key things that I like to avoid doing though is products that contain uh, paraben or -hmm. some other other uh, ingredients that can be very disrupting to your overall skin microbiome so i try not to get uh involved with those things but in terms Mm -hmm. of using a little bit of petrolatum to actually help to seal that moisture when your hand is cracking to begin with one of the things that you should definitely look into yeah Um, it's hard to beat for that purpose no and price point wise again how much are you willing to spend on it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
you and I actually have a very uh, broad uh, general population of actually just following us, right? We mm-hmm. cannot be picking, choosing products that's going to cost a hundred to a thousand dollars. You could right. spend all that kind of money, but for the bank for the buck and the value that you're going to get, over the counter items, especially CRV, uh, those are great products they're already making. And yeah, I have nothing but to recommend it to my patients who are suffering during the winter month because of that reason. Yeah, absolutely. You, you touched on ceramides a little bit, containing creams that contain ceramides. And, you know, um, the CeraVe healing ointment also contains ceramides. As you mentioned, those are kind of those lipids, part of the building blocks. If we look at the skin as bricks and mortar in the winter months with severe dry skin, I mean, that brick and mortar is like a crumbly brick wall where all the glue that's supposed to hold things together is kind of absent. And ceramides are important to help restore that skin barrier, the things that hold the skin cells together. And so finding products that contain ceramides, and a lot of companies have caught on to that. So it's not just CeraVe now that has ceramides, but I'm using lots of different moisturizers that contain a good complement of ceramides. And I think that's an important um, aspect I just wanted to touch on again. Yeah, ceramides is a really important. Fatty acids are very important as well. One of the things that I've been looking at more now, and some of the skincare skincare companies are looking at this as well, natural moisturizing factors, NMF. Right. Those are really working well yeah. with uh, hyaluronic acid and providing that natural barrier. And as you start to age, you start losing that natural moisturizing factor. And if you're especially dealing with eczema or severe skin, especially during the month, that's a key piece that you're missing. And so there's certain skin products like uh, SkinCeuticals. They're starting to really delve into uh, NMF. And in terms of the skincare that we compound as well, we're looking to adding into those type of ingredients in there to to bring forth a better solution for patients and get a better results. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's a, it's an important point. Our body doesn't do a lot of things quite as well as we get older. You know, creating those lipids and oils in the skin, those natural moisturizing factors is certainly one of them, you know, like sarcopenia, muscle loss, bone density loss. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happen as we age. And so finding ways to replace that safely and effectively um, is really good. So yeah. um, another issue is that people are not eating well either. You oh, I, mean, I agree. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we're eating, you know, we, we could go off on a whole tangent there, but all these things with seed oils and processed and refined sugars yeah. and carbs and yeah, it's horrible for your skin, but you know, uh, I still do it sometimes. I think everybody probably has their guilty pleasure. <laughs> Once in a while, right? That's not so. Wrong with yep. That. <laughs> but got to have you a healthy live. lifestyle overall. It's a balance. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a balance. So uh, another thing that I often recommend to patients is to back off a little bit on the actives, um, active ingredients over the course of the winter. So if you're using like harsh cleansers, things like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, if your acne is well controlled, for example, switch to a hydrating cleanser, something that's just got mild surfactants in it that can help to remove dirt and oil without being a true soap, which has a very basic pH that will strip all the oils off your skin. So um, I really, I personally almost always use a, um, a hydrating cleanser and um, my skin's just very sensitive. So I don't use a lot of salicylic acid, uh, maybe once a week or so, or some other exfoliant. But um, I'm sure that you see patients coming in all the time to a pharmacy and they're buying like benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid and cleansers with the same ingredients and spot treatments. And like, it's just, they're going to get themselves in trouble with their skin barrier. Yeah. All the time. I mean, especially teenagers coming in with severe acne, you know, first thing they might be thinking about is how can I dry out my skin to dry out that acne? One of the things that we have to look at in terms of is how can we moisturize our skin? So this way we, pr- we produce less of that sebum, right? That's the mm-hmm. key thing that's going to cause that, uh, you know, oily buildup and on top of a great reservoir for bacteria to grow to begin with. So you want to hydrate as much as you can. So one of the things I like to, again, is using that hydration that you just mentioned about, um, you know, if you're going to talk about anything else, this is like my go-to skin, um, you know, wash. You could even use this on your entire body if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, great product to use. And I do this uh, twice a day. And then afterwards, one of the things that I recommend also doing is using some type of, again, another hydration device, hyaluronic acid, right? And then Mm -hmm. also vitamin C added in there uh, to hydrate and 
also prevent free radical damages. And free radical damage can actually occur in the winter at the same time. It's not just mm -hmm. about sun exposure or just going in the sun. Any daily environmental aspect of it, you're going to get free radical damage. So you want to put this into practice on a daily basis. Yeah, there's ample opportunity even over the winter to get um, free radical damage. You know, you're still going to get sun exposure. Sunscreen is still important for winter skin care, especially if you're doing, you know, outdoor sports, you're going to get reflection off of the snow. And a lot of cities, you know, that I've lived in here in the West is we get these inversions because we're in a valley and surrounded by mountains. And that inversion contains a lot of pollution and that's not very good for your skin either. So having antioxidant serums, vitamin C, um, tocopherol, and, and there's a few others that can really help to neutralize those free radicals that would do damage to your DNA, that would impact your skin barrier. CE ferulic right there, love that one. Love, um, love, and there's love. lots of variations, you know, if you have more oily skin and, uh, and different things. So saying hi to Dr. Josh Zeichner, who just joined in. So hi, Dr. Josh. Um, but, I, you know, those are, those are great, um, great tips, you know, over the course of the winter. I don't know if you have any other high yield tips or if we should try to answer a couple of questions. Um, I would also recommend extra hydration, even in the evening. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. If you're going to do anything for your face, um, you know, wash your face. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, retinol, if you could apply that, if you are able to tolerate it, especially in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, but key thing is to utilizing other extra emollient base. You could even use that skin, uh, the cream that we talked about. Uh, there are other skincare products that containing the uh, natural uh, moisturizing factors. Uh, I love B5, utilizing uh, vitamin B5 as one of the key things for your face, mm -hmm. especially in the evening. Uh, so yeah. lot, you could do a lot of things. I mean, we could, we could talk about this for hours. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I just happen to have it sitting right here. But like the Hylou B5, this is from La Roche-Posay. Um, so you've got hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5, which is great for moisturizing. Yep, yep. Um, and then just because it's a body cream doesn't mean you can't use a moisturizing cream from the body on the face. I often use that on my face over the course of the winter. Um, and it's a great way to get that moisture on there. So, um, a lot of good tips and, um, you know, kind of seeing the patient journey with the dermatologist, also with the pharmacist and try to prevent some of those mistakes that, that people can make in their winter skincare. Absolutely. And it has to be done on a routine basis. So if you're not doing yeah. it right now, do it religiously, especially yeah. in winter. Yeah. So let's see. Um, best winter skincare tip for atopic dermatitis was one of the questions that came in. And one of the things that I would recommend, you know, in addition to everything we've talked about, definitely applies to atopic dermatitis or eczema. But this is, I think, a mean tip, but it is an effective tip is don't take long, hot showers. I know that they feel so good in the winter, but if you can keep your shower time short and keep that temperature down a little bit so that it's not uncomfortably cold but not hot, um, that is a little more gentle on your skin. So that is a good tip for eczema-prone skin in the winter. I took a cold shower every day anyway, so yeah. <laughs> that's not much of a problem. I haven't got that level of mental toughness yet. I, I look at people doing these ice baths in the barrel and I'm like, oh, I haven't done that yet, yet. Yeah. maybe someday, I don't know. So, so for um, atopic dermatitis, I do recommend utilizing a topical CBD ointment. Yeah, that's very helpful that. for that. Yeah, so CBD in general um, is derived from hemp, is legal to get. I don't think it's legal to get it in Idaho. There are CBD products. It's, right. uh, it's weird. I, I don't know all the regulations around it, but um, it certainly is available at different places. Yeah. So CBD is anti-inflammatory and also is an immune modulator. So when you're dealing with atopic dermatitis or even eczema for that matter, um, there are uh, endocannabinoid receptors within your skin as well, which helps to modulate the skin uh, and as well as the, uh, your immune system. So overall, dealing with inflammation, topical CBD can be very helpful for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the companies that I like to recommend is Imbio Botanical. I use this clinically and personally as well. Um, and great product to use on a daily basis. You could use it along with the moisturizers that you end up having to use. So mm -hmm. go be it. I mean, that, that's something that I always recommend doing. Yeah. Especially I'll, have to, I'll have to investigate that one because I'm not familiar with that brand, but I'll put it you know, in the 
link when we post this uh, yeah. video. I'll put it on my, my YouTube channel as well when we put Absolutely. that up there. Um, but I think that's a good tip. And that's an area of emerging research is how we can modulate those endocannabinoid receptors to decrease inflammation and to help repair skin barrier. So yeah, those are some good tips. So yeah. um, I think we covered a lot of great stuff. And yeah. uh, the couple other questions that we had come in, I think that we kind of answered them. Best moisturizer for dry winter skin. And we gave some examples with CeraVe. Um, I think Cetaphil cream is also great. Vanna cream, I think is often overlooked, but another brand that I'm pretty fond of. Um, Vanna cream, and old school cream brand. Um, I still love it. I still use it in my compounds when that, and whenever I have a patient who's very sensitive to certain products. Yeah. So great product to use. Absolutely. So I don't know that I have a, a lot of other high yield tips. I don't know if you've got uh, any more pearls to drop on us, Dr. Kim. Hydration. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Start from the inside out. Inside and out. And that's, that's a lot of missing key piece that you don't feel thirsty, but especially in the winter month, you tend to lose a lot of water. So mm -hmm. make sure you drink a lot of water, add that electrolytes as well, and have that routine skincare that you could stick with. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but as long as you have a good routine going on, it's going to be life changing. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for your time, and um, I'm glad that we did this. We should definitely do it again. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for uh, your time uh, and, and as well as being an invite for your show. Yeah, thanks so much. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Absolutely.